we've seen that that reveal itself in a number of occasions. We saw that with Brexit, how when people um, voted to go out, um, they were stupid. They didn't realize what they were voting for. They didn't get it. Uh, Trump came along, or you were duped by, um, you know, my, my charismatic con man. Um, um, the, uh, you know, COVID happened. Well, you know, people who don't go along with the vaccine or the lockdown, or you, you're stupid too. Um, it really, really is showing there's this, um, there's this class, not just within politics, but even within society, um, that has real disdain for, for its fellow citizens. Um, I think for a long time, we, we didn't like to believe that, but I think it really showed it showed itself. Um, one of the reasons why I think um, going back to how this happened and the education, uh, it would seem that uh, I would say it would seem that Gramsci has uh, won won out. He was successful. I mean, after after the fall of the Soviet Union, you know, the idea of the hot pot warfare and world revolution was was um no more but it seemed that they never gave up but they just turned from from hot warfare to asymmetrical soft warfare and did the long march into, into the institutions and it's been for that and they were successful i mean look at the universities how many professors are some variant of being a, openly being a marxist i mean you will never see that when it comes to fascism, <laughs> you know, they won't say, oh, well, Mussolini did a few bad things, but, you know, the trains ran on time and, you know, I'm a fascist. Uh, um, so it's strange how we were still very accepted. And I would say um, maybe the solution would be, ironically, um, the anti-globalists, so to speak, would have to adopt um, uh, Graham Sheep himself and in a method in you have to play the long game and and maybe try to at least take back the institutions or at least create alternative alternative ones um do you think that's um realistic mm. um well I think it's an interesting question I think um it's the right question. Um, I'm, I'm sort of, I wish I had greater clarity uh, to, to give you in my response, Daniel. Um, I think that <clears throat> what we are um, seeing if we again go back to the ancient sources you'll find the greatest uh generals um you know before alexander the great probably xenophon um but whether you're looking at xenophon um uh alexander julius caesar uh, the great generals recognized uh, that each battle had to be fought on its absolutely specific uh, circumstances of, uh, you know, whether uh, topography, uh, relative strength of the two forces, the um, uh, extent of the skills uh, spread throughout the uh, platoons, battalions, divisions, um, and the great general is the one who has the sort of uh, plasticity or adaptability of mind to recognize um, the changed uh, circumstances. <clears throat> and we see uh, again and again throughout history, a smaller force is capable of defeating a larger force if, if it is guided by a better mind. And... I guess I would say that the, um, you know, the Gramsciite, progressive left, um, cultural Marxists, <clears throat> they have adopted, they adopted uh, a strategy uh, under the, you know, Saul Alinsky style model, 
uh, which is to erode the operation from within. Don't attempt to marshal a military uh, or state uh, nationalist force to invade anybody, but just insinuate yourself, secrete yourself inside the major institutions and patiently work away uh, over, as it turns out now, over four uh, decades uh, to achieve your goals by taking control of the levers of various um, nation states uh, once described as democracies. So fascinatingly, um, you know, if we just take one example, uh, Dr. Philip Khoury was one of the most lucid, uh, courageous, rational observers of the global response to uh, this sort of COVID mania. And he said, if you look at the you know 180 odd uh, sovereign states recognised by the United Nations, and say uh, which countries he said there were three out of 180 that quote completely lost their minds he said take your pick in the order of precedence of mental derangement of public health policy makers uh, between canada australia and new zealand so our country winds up in the distinction uh, of being, you know, among the top uh, three, in the top, in effect, you know, one percent of the most fearful, uh, deranged, um, locked down, um, lost our minds, um, and yet those three, you know, um, um, it is an enormous credit for those of us who have been in politics in some professional paid uh, capacity. Uh, we say politics is a business that pays on results, and we have to say extraordinary, uh, successful, long-term mission by the big state bureaucratic um, neo-Marxist left. Uh, they sort of, we have to say, almost deserve the results they're getting uh, because they have worked for so hard uh, over such a long period of time uh, to achieve it to the point where they can now um, kind of get away with uh, injecting a 10-year-old girl with puberty-blocking drugs that will permanently sterilise her, uh, while at the same time uh, conducting outraged, furious campaigns to heighten the standards of consent uh, required in an intimate relationship. Uh, they have such complete mastery and control of the agenda and the major historical media, you know, uh, just putty, just complete plasticity in their hands uh, because the guys have been so successful in taking control of usually tax-funded revenue streams to funnel them into the pockets of the shareholders of those compliant uh, media organisations. So anyway, I, I just say to you, the fact that they have achieved this result by this method, it may be that some alternative method in response uh, is required uh, in order to overcome uh, this threat. Um, it looks like the more likely result is that they will succeed in destroying the civilization. That the aircraft, which is sort of faltering, um, you know, will reach stall speed uh, like an energy grid, uh, municipal power uh, transmission network that requires a certain level of what the electrical engineers call inertia, which is the underlying power generated by a minimum number of coal-fired power stations, which are switched on 24 hours a day, not dependent on wind or sunlight, but just continue to churn and deliver this base load of power, which keeps the whole grid 
um, functioning effectively, efficiently, uh, safely. And what happens is if you fall below that minimum level of what is called inertia, the whole thing becomes unstable and ceases to function and will implode. And it's very difficult to start it up again um, once that happens. And in truth, the same thing happens to civilizations uh, over the course of history. They 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 rise and and fall, and um, the decline happens at different rates, different speeds. You know, the Western Roman Empire uh, collapsed uh, faster than the Eastern uh, Roman Empire, but in effect, in the end, they both collapsed and. The, they are like we in the Western world. You know, Australia, New Zealand and Canada have lost our minds. Um, uh, the Parliament House Canberra is really like a mental asylum. Um, you've got absolute nut job head cases who actually believe that uh, the earth is boiling uh, when we've just had snow uh, in you know Johannesburg for the first time in sort of ten years, and ten times as many people die of cold on this earth every year as die of heat. Yet we've got Chris Bowen down there uh, wanting to build uh, windmills in the ocean to make the temperature of the earth colder. Well, this guy's a nut job. Okay, he's a head case. He has lost his mind. But the, that wouldn't be such a problem for Australia if not for the fact that he is so broadly representative of this Paphlagonian cult, uh, which will eventually, we will see the civilization, not just the energy grid, but the civilization reaches stall speed and then the nose points towards the ground and uh, adopts the trajectory of a kamikaze pilot.